Hey guys, Zach here with Zem Construction, bringing you another remodel video. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps that I took to take this space here, bring in all new cabinets, countertops, tile backsplash, flooring, appliances, and updated plumbing fixtures, and turn it into this beautiful kitchen here. I wanna take a minute and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you like these types of videos, I would really appreciate your subscription. I post them as often as I can, some remodels do take a little longer than others, so if you could hit that notification bell and be notified when I do post a video, then you won't miss out. So here are some before pictures. You can see there's a little bit of water damage, also a little bit of excess wear and tear. So the homeowner and I decided that it would be a lot more efficient and cost-effective to rip out those cabinets and replace them with all new ones. The entire design of this kitchen is based off of pictures that the homeowner gave me from Pinterest and Google. I really enjoy working off of inspiration like that because then it also allows some creative freedom on my part, but at the end to give them the overall look that they are going for. This property is an income property. It is a rental, so they will be renting out the entire space. So a nice, clean, updated kitchen is a great way to get quality tenants so the first step was going through and scraping off all of the caulk lines and excess buildup that needed to be removed. Some of these places are going to be recovered by cabinets, but there are a couple spots that aren't going to be filled with the same size and types of cabinets that were there before. So I went through and scraped those all off and then went through with a spackle. I think an all purpose mud would also work here, but I think spackle does dry a little bit harder. So because of the durability that was desired for this space, because it is a rental property, I chose to go with a spackle. Went through and sanding those things flush. I am going to be spraying a orange peel texture. And that is something that I do hear often in the comments is how much people do not like the texture that we choose. This is a thing that is regional, depending on where you live, there is different uh, standards as far as what people like and up here in the northwest an orange peel finish is very common i also wanted to make sure that i match the rest of the house and keep that cohesive so because i'm going to be using a spray texture hopper i went through and masked off everything i use a inch and a half blue painters tape as well as a nine inch roll of paper with a hand masker and then for the long plastic sheets, I use a 3M 72 inch plastic. One trick that I like to use, especially when going over a pre-existing paint, is when you spray texture mud, it does not have the best bonding. So in order to get good bond to the previous layers, I actually mix the texture mud with a high bond primer and sometimes even a one-to-one -one ratio and use that to spray onto the wall so that the orange peel does not flake off later because of an inferior bond to the lower levels of paint. There was some inconsistencies in the previous texture, but also I wanted to cover up some of those patches that I filled in earlier. So I just retextured the entire space. So now I'm going through with a Graco X7 airless paint sprayer. It's a great tool to use for both interior and exterior painting. It does spray a lot of paint and there is quite a bit of overspray. So that's why I took the time to make sure everything was masked properly. Again, the colors were chosen by the homeowner based on some pictures that they had sent me. Because of the texture, I did go through and hit everything with a roller real quick just to kind of push uh, any excess paint into some of those deeper grooves and textures. One thing that was a little bit unique in the design that she had chosen was that she wanted to do a darker ceiling. And it's not something that I'm very familiar with, but that was something that she's done in, in her own house and wanted to replicate that in this space. And I told her it wouldn't be an issue. So after all the painting and wall prep was done, next was the cabinets. We went with a contractor grade cabinet Again, because this is a rental property, cost was a factor. So we didn't wanna to go too crazy and, sp and spend a bunch of money on the cabinets, uh, but these are great quality and will last. I did add a vent there for a microwave uh, hood. 
there was a little bit of a spacing issue with where the hood goes so i had to add a little bit of a spacer on the far left to make sure that that vent did go through the middle of that cabinet there was an outlet there as you could see where the old microwave was so i just when i did install the microwave you'll see later i just kind of ran the cord through there worked out great one tip that i could give you when installing cabinets is when i screw them to the walls I don't actually screw them in all the way. I kind of leave it a little bit loose for adjustment. So that way when I put the face plates together, I can make sure those are perfectly square and straight and flush, screw those together really tight. And then I go back and tighten all of the screws that are into the walls. And in this case, up above on the soffit. I also like to do the upper cabinets first just to get them done. And I don't have to worry about working around the base cabinets that it would be in the way. So after all the uppers were up, brought in all the lowers and getting those installed one piece that we did want to go with was a lazy susan the lazy susans are a great way to use space efficiently however they do come a little bit smaller than the uh, depth that normal base cabinets go so with that you got to add a little bit of a wall on the back to support the countertop so i did a little wall here and also did a cleat on the back of the wall so that the countertop had a nice flat level place to sit on. I just used some standard two by fours to create this wall. I did a normal base plate and a top plate, just like you would like a traditional wall. I wanted to have lots of support for that countertop. Also along the back of this, I'm gonna be adding a quarter inch panel. So I wanted to have lots of support so that that panel would be nice and strong. In here, you'll see that I put one vertical support, but I do end up going back and adding two more in the spaces to give it as much stiffness as possible. I also put a cleat along the back just for some added support behind the dishwasher. So after the cabinets were installed, the next step was the laminate countertops. Again, we chose laminate because of the cost effectiveness as well as the durability. One tip I would give you when doing these countertops, you can actually buy the pieces at this size from uh, your big box store, Home Depot in this case, but always check for square. These pieces were completely out of square and it took me way too long to figure out what was wrong with my measurements. It just came from the factory that way. So I trued up one edge and it made the rest of the install go significantly easier. I did go with a spacer underneath all of the cabinets to give a inch and a half reveal for all the countertops. As you can see, I'm putting those blocks on here. Those spacers only need to be in places where the countertop will be attached to the top of the cabinet. Also, because this house was empty and there are currently no tenants living there, I was able to utilize several of the rooms as kind of workspaces. And this is a great place to have a nice big flat space to create that large single piece countertop. I did have the spacers overhang a little bit so that I could go back with a flush trim router bit. In this clip here, you can see I'm using the cordless DeWalt router. It is a great tool. I'm really, really glad I did it. Didn't have to worry about a cord um, all over the place. I use it in several different places, especially at this countertop. But using that flush trim bit gives a really nice flat reveal and gives a great place for the laminate to stick on. So the next step was getting the sink cut out. Most of the time, sinks do come with a big template like this. So I just found the center, put it exactly where I wanted to, lined up with the window as well as the lower cabinet below, taped it in place, and then went through with the pencil and just traced it out. Because the cabinets were new and the countertops were being replaced and all put in, I did use that to my advantage and I was able to pull the countertops away and make the cuts and even installs as you'll see later without having the countertop fully installed. Here I am cutting out the sinkhole with the, again, another cordless DeWalt tool. As you'll see, a lot of the tools that I use uh, have that yellow coloring to them. I'm a big fan of DeWalt and I really like their batteries and the flexibility between the 60 volt as well as the 20 volt. There I am checking the fit of the sink. I did go and order a 12 foot by five foot piece of laminate so that I did not have any seams. Uh, it is something that you have to special order. So as you can see here, I'm actually cutting the two inch strips for the edge 
of the countertop, so I cut those off first so I could use the factory edge. I just used a straight edge piece of trim and, and the router. I found that using a router, even though you're doing a straight cut, is one of the best ways to make those cuts. So I like to put the edge of the countertop on first so that the reveal of the laminate is on the side as opposed to putting the top on first and the edges last because then you'll see the reveal on, on the top of the countertop. So I hope that makes sense. But whenever I do laminate, I like to do the sides first. Also keeping in mind which section of the countertop is gonna be seen most because the laminate does have a dark reveal like I mentioned. So keep in mind where that dark reveal is and be strategic about where you place those edges. There are three sections total, large L shape with the sink in it. As you can see here, I'm getting those flushed up and ready. And then also the two smaller sections that were on either side of the stove. Again, this cordless DeWalt router made quick work of this process. Highly recommend it if you are in the market for a new router. Also that tool and any of the other tools that I use, I do have links in the description down below. They are affiliate links and they don't cost you any more money, but it does support this channel if you do use that link. So if you are in the market again, I'd greatly appreciate it. So I used a spray adhesive, countertop adhesive for the edges, but I did go out with a roll-on uh, contact glue for the top. So the process is just do a nice heavy coat on both sides of the countertop. Let both of those dry to the touch. On the particle board side, I actually did do two coats. I felt like the particle board is pretty absorbent, so I wanted to add a second coat to make sure I had a good layer for or a good bond again using one of the spare bedrooms as a an extra workspace it was pretty cold outside so although i could have done it outside i was a little worried that using the adhesives outside would cause issues for the drying time so once the two sides of the countertop and the laminate do stick or touch they are stuck together forever so that's, you can see me using some dowels there as spacers so that I can get the top layer of the laminate lined up. And then once it's lined up, I can slowly carefully pull out those dowels and make sure that the laminate is lined up properly. Go back with a nice little J roller and push down, make sure that there's a good solid bond. I would recommend if you came get a partner for some of the bigger pieces. I did prepare myself and was able to do it alone, but it would have been a lot easier with someone else. But again, once everything is lined up, you can just go through and slowly pull the dowels out. Make sure, continually make sure it's everything's lined up. And again, I went back and, and rolled it all with a J-roller. Again, using that router with a flush trim bit was awesome, especially on large pieces like this, not having to worry about the cord. I could go around every single side of the countertop very, very easily. getting those countertops installed again kind of like I mentioned earlier it was so nice being able to pull the countertop away and do the install I highly recommend if you ever are doing a new sink if you can install the faucet before putting the sink in the countertop it's a lot easier to make sure everything is tight and straight before dropping the sink in again I also attach the sink to the countertop before putting it in again allowing it a lot more space make it make my life a little bit easier to put those clips and attachments in get everything lined up and pushed in then i went through from underneath and screwed the countertop in from the bottom so after the countertop was in the next step was doing the tile backsplash so this is a three inch by six inch subway tile backsplash again going off of the uh, pictures that the homeowner gave me I'm sure I'll get a little bit of grief in the comments for this. I did go with a tile adhesive. I know that tile adhesive is not the best product to use with tile. In my opinion, there are certain cases where it is okay because it is quick and a tile backsplash is one of those cases. There's not gonna be excess water hitting that backsplash. And so using a, an adhesive as opposed to a thin set is gonna be okay. 
However, if you are doing something in a bathroom, especially a shower or a bathtub, I highly recommend using a thin set and not a tile adhesive. Again, this is a very specific case that I think it'll work, but it is not something that you should be using for all cases. As you can see, I try to use masking tape wherever I can just to make cleanup significantly easier, a lot more straightforward. A little bit of planning when installing tile does go a long way. You can see my little stack of half tiles that I had there. So I go through and easily do that subway pattern very, very quickly. One thing when you're expansing across a gap, like where the stove is gonna go, you wanna make sure you add a cleat. The homeowner did want to use, as you'll see later, a white grout. So because the grout was just gonna match the tile and there wasn't going to be a high contrast between the actual tile and grout color, I just used the space that the tile provides and not use spacers. If you did want to use like a, a darker grout for some uh, design aesthetic, I would recommend getting like an eighth inch spacer and putting those in between there and it allows for a little bit of a thicker grout line and gives more of that contrast. But again, because they were gonna match, I didn't feel like it was necessary. The tile does have a little lip on the edge so it allows for a 16th inch space between each and every tile. So in that case, I thought it worked out. I did use an uh, extra piece of the countertop as a spacer along the bottom so that I could have a nice caulk line. Here I am putting in that non-sanded white grout again because this is a 16th inch space and not an 8th eight, eight inch space, I had to go with non-sanded. If you do have an 8th inch space or larger, sanded works great. But in this case, because it was just a thin space, non-sanded worked. After the tile was put in, next I moved on to the floor. And as you can see, I did not pull up the pre-existing linoleum. Um, that was something that the homeowner and I talked about, and they had decided that they didn't want to remove it, and they didn't want to pay me what I had asked to remove it. And so, because this is how I feed my family and, and my time is quite valuable to me, if I'm not gonna be paid for something, then I'm not going to do it. So I know that would probably be the uh, better step to take, but we are using an LVP click together floating floor system. So there is no adhesion or anything to worry about in that case. So as long as the floor underneath is flat, there is nothing wrong with putting an LVP over the top. And so that's what we decided to do. This is a great product for kitchens, bathrooms, basements, living rooms. It's 100% waterproof. The technology has finally caught up to the flooring industry. It is also very straightforward to install. It does take a little bit of practice, but the click together is a great option. There also is glue down and peel and stick flooring. I think in this case would also work. Again, up to personal preference and, and each one of those does have a price difference as well. So. did put some of that new flooring in the landing leading downstairs. Again, speaking to the versatility of this product, it really can go anywhere, even on steps, like in this case. What's also great is that if any piece is ever damaged for any reason, you can simply just pop out that piece and replace it with a completely new one. After all the flooring was done, the next step was to go through and add the toe kick to underneath the cabinets. And because these cabinets are from Home Depot, you can go down the same aisle and buy the matching toe kicks as well as any other spacers that are already painted to match. And after the toe kick, I went through and started adding the baseboard and door trim. Most of the trim is around the windows and the doors I just kept and patched any places that needed it. But because they were ripped out previously, I did have to go through and replace all of the baseboard. Another DeWalt tool that I would highly recommend is their cordless 18 gauge brad nailer. It works so well when doing trim work like that and not having to worry about the air compressor and the hoses and the cords that come along with that is incredible. Now I'm putting in some of these light fixtures with a very thin flush mount light for over the top of the sink. In a perfect world, we would have done a recessed light there, but because of the previous light that was in, it would have made life a lot more difficult. So I just went for the extra cost of a flush mount. One of the last steps was to go through and get the appliances installed. So you can see that vent that is there because the microwave that I'm putting in does have an integrated vent hood. Kind of like the sinks, these microwaves do have paper templates that show you exactly where to put the screw holes and the mounting brackets. 
makes installation very easy. And you can see I'm actually, I ran the cord through that first cabinet, push it through the other side so it could be plugged in. And because I had the holes pre-drilled and lined up exactly, made installation very, very simple. After the microwave, the next step was to get the oven installed. This is a gas oven. I would highly recommend if you are installing gas, make sure you use a leak detection fluid. In this case, the oven actually came with one and I was able to test all of the joints, make sure there were no leaks. But also if this is something you are uncomfortable with, it is great practice to call a professional. In most cases, the places that you buy the appliances will install them for you. If not, they will more than likely have someone you can call to install them properly. Do not take any chances of this type of stuff if you're not comfortable. And then after those two were installed, I went through and hit all of the trim with a nice white paint. I was sure to get the matching color of the cabinet so I could paint this back panel here, as well as do any touch-up work that any of the cabinets needed. So I added some paint in the, some of the other rooms for them as well. Next, went through and installed the dishwasher. There was no dishwasher previously, so there was a little bit of excess plumbing and electrical that needed to be done in order to accommodate a dishwasher, which I think is a great idea as another aspect that will really add some value and desire for potential tenants. And the very last step was to add those finishing touches. I went through and added the door poles and drawer poles. Again, going with the inspiration picture that I was given on Pinterest to give the look that they were going for. You can see I'm using a jig from uh, Craig. They make a, a great little jig that allows you to line up the holes perfectly, makes installing poles and handles so much easier. I will also have a link to that down in the description below. And getting the large refrigerator installed, there was an ice machine and water supply in the fridge, so I had to hook up those. And then with drawer poles, there are some different size screws, and because of the different depths in those shaker style drawers, there uh, I had to go to the hardware store and buy new screws at different sizes in order for those to fit. Doing some final cleanup to get ready and show the homeowner their brand new kitchen. So here is the video walkthrough of what the homeowner saw after everything was all finished up. So as you can see, we went with a white shaker style cabinet, a laminate countertop that has a granite look to it, a dark wood LVP flooring, all new Bosch appliances, gas stove, a very traditional white baseboard, a gray beige wall paint, and then the ceiling was just several shades darker. Now I get a lot of flack for this and I say it in all my videos, but this one again turned out really nice. The homeowner was very pleased. So here's some after pictures. At a later date, we may or may not add a little dine-in bench for there just to have a little bit more efficiency and not have to worry about scooting around the table and having chairs in the way because that is kind of a small space, but it is designated for dining. Lazy Susan cabinet right there. Nice stainless sink, large faucet over the top. So this project turned out really great. Um, again, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It just kind of lets everyone else know that this is this is an interesting video. Again, I would really appreciate it if your subscription and also hit that notification bell so that you're notified when I do post a remodel video. If you have any questions or comments or anything, I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment down below. I'll do my best to get to most of those and answer them. If you enjoy these types of videos, I would really encourage you to check out the other ones I have posted on my channel. They're all under Zem Construction. I have two basement remodel videos on there as well as a bathroom. And I also have several more in the pipeline that I wanna post very, very soon. Again, I wanna thank you so much for watching. And until next time, We'll see you later.